Why? Why would any of us in this room who hold the core beliefs we believe, somebody tell me where is the compromise on all of this spending? Where is the compromise on all this punishment of the achievers? I don't know. Where is... <laughs> where is the compromise between good and evil? Should Jesus have cut a different deal? <laughs> well, no, seriously, I'm, from a standpoint of what we have to do, folks, this is not about taking a policy or a process that the Democrats have put forward and fighting over it about around the edges. We have, if we're, if we're going to convince the minds and hearts of the American people that what's about to happen to them is as disastrous as anything in their lives in peacetime, we're going to have to discuss philosophy with it. We are going to have to talk about principle because our principles are not present in what's happening here. So where the hell do we go to compromise what we believe in when our principles are not there? Our principles are just the opposite of what is happening. The American people, it's a tough challenge. I'm, I, admit, I admit it's a tough challenge, but it's worth it. It's worth it. The way I just defined bipartisanship, you could turn it around. Liberals will define bipartisanship when we surrender and say, okay, we give. We're not quitting. We are not giving up. There is countries too important. We, Now, there are certain realities. We don't have the votes in Capitol Hill to stop what's going to happen. What we can do is slow it down. Procedure, parliamentary procedures. Slow it down and do the best we can to inform the American people of what's really on the horizon. I know it's going to be tough. At some point, I don't think it can happen even right now. I mean, this is still a honeymoon period, and, and there's, a, there's a lot of uh, devotion to the Obama administration has nothing to do with intellect or thinking. Uh, it's, it's feelings. It's, it, it's just going to take some time for this to play out. But I, I spoke to David Keene, uh, interviewing him for my newsletter. I asked him about this, and he said, they're going to overreach. <laughs> Wouldn't you say they have? <laughs> I mean, I, they, they're going to overreach. At some point, at some point, people are going to realize none of this is possible. You can't have people living in homes they don't pay for. You can't have people driving cars they don't pay for. I mean, you can for a while, but after a while, the people paying for it are fine. Screw this. We're not putting up with it. And you're going to see, and you're already starting to see evidence of this, all these tea parties that are starting to bubble up out there. Those are great. It's fabulous. Here's the big question. Here's the big question. And I ask this again in the context of my first address to the nation. <laughs> you don't know how I love saying that, how excited I am about this. This is. <laughs> uh, aside from the bastardization of the Constitution that the Obama plans are, that TARP is. It's not constitutional. Aside from that, where is the evidence that the people authoring all this have ever succeeded in any similar plans before? There's none. There is no evidence it works. So, you say, well, then how, how's he getting it done? Dumb down public education, dumb down public emotions, and the ongoing, this is why I think it's such a waste for a man as gifted as President Obama with the communication spills, skills. Do you know what? He could wipe out the Republican Party. He could wipe out the Republican Party if he would inspire this country to be the best it could be. But we don't have to worry about that because that's not what he wants. He wants people in fear, angst, and crisis, fearing the worst each and every day because that clears the decks 
for President Obama and his pals to come in with the answers, which are abject failures historically shown and demonstrated. Doesn't matter. They'll have control of it when it's all over. And that's what they want, because they think they can do it better. They see these inequalities, these inequities that capitalism produces. How do they try to fix it? Do they try to elevate those at the bottom? No, they try to tear down the people at the top.